Ethical Perspectives on the News is produced by the Interreligious Council of Lynn County, which is solely responsible for its content. The views and opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of KCRG TV9. Good morning and welcome to Ethical Perspectives on the News. I'm your moderator, Carl Cassell, and thank you for joining us today. There seems to be an increase in the level of hateful rhetoric and acts of violence against underrepresented groups. And one that seems to often become a scapegoat in times like this is the Jewish community. Anti-Semitism is not new in America or abroad, but it should never be tolerated along with any other form of hatred that leads to violence. And it's important enough that we uh, address this issue um, and try to do the best that we can to educate and also negate any future uh, uh, acts of violence. So today we're going to discuss uh, this topic with two uh, guests that uh, are knowledgeable on uh, anti-Semitism and the Jewish religion in general. Uh, my first guest is Rabbi uh, from the uh, from the synagogue, um, Esther Hugenholtz. Um, she's a rabbi at Agudas uh, Akim Synagogue. Good morning. Good morning. And our uh, other guest, we have a professor from the University of Iowa, Lisa Heinemann. Good morning. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, so glad to have you guys. And so um, what we want to do is look at uh, anti-Semitism from a historical perspective, a religious perspective, and then really what's happening today. Um, so if we could, let's just uh, start um, uh, from a historical perspective um, and, and, and tell me, where it got its rise. Uh, uh, just let's unpack the historical perspective of anti-Semitism. Well, I think it would, it's, it's really useful to start by getting a sense of prior to anti-Semitism, there has to exist Judaism. Certainly. So I'd love to start maybe by asking you to talk a little bit about Judaism, what it is, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm happy to take over as the historian of anti-Semitism and, and bounce off of that. Thank you. So yeah, I think, you know, when I teach uh, people about anti-Semitism, I always start with talking about Judaism because you cannot understand anti-Semitism without mm -hmm. understanding Judaism. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm obviously, as a rabbi, really invested in showcasing the beauty and vibrancy of the Jewish tradition, which mm -hmm. has survived for millennia and thrived for millennia. So I think that's a really helpful way to start the conversation. Mm -hmm. So. It, Judaism is notoriously difficult to mm -hmm. define, especially by modern standards, because the way we define identity by modern standards tend to be according to nation, mm -hmm. uh, nation state or according to ethnic group mm -hmm. or religion or, or, or. And in the case of Judaism, these identities t tend to be and, and, and. Mm -hmm. So if I would give a working definition of Judaism, it's a mouthful, um, I would say Judaism is a multi-ethnic, global mm -hmm. religious civilization mm -hmm. based on the concept of covenant peoplehood, mm -hmm. right? So it's important to understand there are about 14 million Jews worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, we are present in almost every country of the world. Mm -hmm. We are ethnically diverse. You have Jews in Africa, Europe, Asia, mm -hmm. Latin America, North mm -hmm. America, the Middle East. Um, Jews come in every color and um, every kind of background mm -hmm. and cultural background and throughout our history um, obviously our centers have moved right so once upon a time our center was in uh, the ancient land of Israel mm -hmm. or in Rome or in Baghdad or in medieval Spain or medieval Poland mm -hmm. and now the two large populations of Jews live in Israel and in the United States with other populations elsewhere around the world mm -hmm. right I certainly don't want to minimize um, the Jewish populations outside of those two large centers um, and Jews define in a way that is both a religion and a people mm -hmm. um, and in some ways a tribe mm -hmm. but that's also non 
racial. So one of the things that anti-Semites, that anti-Semitism does is racialize Judaism, make it all about that we are some alleged race. We are not. You can leave Judaism and you can come into Judaism and you can convert to Judaism and then you gain full rights and obligations of Jewish citizenship, mm -hmm. as you will. Um, so it's open, our boundaries are open and porous and always have been open throughout okay. history. Sure. So I think like just saying that, that, you know, we, we are diverse and vibrant and um, we are not just a set of beliefs. Mm -hmm. There are Jews who are religious in various forms, Orthodox, conservative, reform, spiritual, whatever you want to call it. And there are Jews who are secular, but still feel energized by the ethical and cultural teachings of Judaism. And they are just as much part of our community mm -hmm. as people who observe the Jewish commandments sure. and live within the covenants, um, who people might you know, be more likely to identify as visibly Jewish, you know, like by wearing a yarmulke, a yeah. kippah, or a Star of David, mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Sure. So, like, we have been around for 3,500 years, and we've always evolved, and we will continue evolving, and it is a wonderful culture and tradition to be part of. Mm -hmm. But because of its complex identity, it's hard for people to understand, well, what are you? Are you a religion? Yes, we're a religion, Certainly. but we're also something else, Certainly. right? We're also like this ancient tribe um, of colorful people in so many ways from different parts of the world who feel connected mm -hmm. in terms of our understanding of the shared history and the shared destiny that we have as a community. So I love being Jewish, otherwise I wouldn't have become a professional Jew, <laughs> obviously, right? So, and I love the fact that there is always space for debate in the Jewish people mm -hmm. and um, that we focus on living a good life here mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. and that we have this wonderful thing called Shabbat, the mm -hmm. Sabbath, mm -hmm. and we have this beautiful textual tradition that's so rich with interpretation. Mm -hmm. So like, I really want people to get excited about the message that Judaism can give to the world in terms of um, the oneness of God and the oneness of humanity and um, the equality of all human beings and the moral obligation that we have to engage in tikkun olam, the repair of the world, and like see Judaism in all its richness, and then we can have a conversation about why anti-Semitism exists. Certainly. Yeah. Yes, well, course. yeah, and this is, it's such a wonderful place to start because I think where anti-Semitism starts is by defining what Jews are not, mm. right? It's, it's sort of about a negation. And the historical origins of anti-Semitism as we know it really start with the complex relationship between Judaism mm -hmm. and one of its splinter spin-offs, which is Christianity, Certainly. right? Um, w where Christians um, accept or believe in or claim the divinity mm -hmm. of Jesus, Son of God, mm -hmm. um, and Jews do not, mm -hmm. right? So there's that kind of do not. Right. You don't believe this thing that mm -hmm. we believe. Um, and since you don't believe this thing that we believe, you're at best just wrong and behind, at worst, dangerous because you might undermine the evolution of this religion you might de you might derail salvation right, right? <laughs> so the origins of anti-semitism really come from um, a certain branch of Christian theology um, that you know, we refer to as successionists. So we are the successors of Judaism. Judaism was fine. It was what it was. In fact, Jesus was Jewish, mm -hmm. but we succeeded it. And now Judaism should acknowledge that its time is up. It should go away, right? Um, so what happens then is this by, by this definition of what Judaism is not, that is, it's not Christianity. And if you're not Christianity, there's something really metaphysically dangerous about mm -hmm. that. It's not like, OK, there's just diversity, and I like mine better. Mm -hmm. It's like you're, you're endangering salvation. That's really big, yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, that then evolves socially and politically as you sort of go through the centuries um, in different locations, in different kinds of political environments, in different kinds of economic environments, that then gets translated into really important 
political positions, mm -hmm. it gets translated into economic discrimination, mm -hmm. and it gets translated into stereotyping, Certainly. right? Sort of cultural stereotypes. So you have a kind of um, really dangerous and intentional misinterpretation of certain Jewish ritual in medieval Europe. Mm -hmm. So for example, Jews celebrate Passover, mm -hmm. right? The liberation of sort of the mytholo mythological story of liberation of the Jews from Egypt mm -hmm. and the, re the receiving of the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. um, there evolves this story in medieval Europe that in order to celebrate Passover, Jews require the blood of a Christian child. Mm. And then you start getting these stories that people really believe that Jews are kidnapping Christian children to slaughter them and use their blood oh, wow. in their Passover matzahs. And this, so Easter becomes this traditionally very dangerous time mm. for Jews in Europe. It gets connected also to the political and economic structures. And by this time, the center of Jewish life has kind of moved to Europe, mm -hmm. which is also overwhelmingly Christian. So Certainly. again, this, this inter intersection of Christianity, and Christianity is itself evolving over mm -hmm. the centuries, um, but it's evolving in political context. So then you sort of have worlds in which you have you know, the economic, you have, you have the lords of the manor and the peasants and the lords want to tax the peasants and yeah. want to, you know, charge them high rents and that sort of stuff. But they don't want the peasants to hate them, so they right. get a middleman, right? And the middleman is a Jew. Mm -hmm. So then they set up a situation where the Jews are the ones to collect the rents, yeah. to collect the taxes, and mm -hmm. then get blamed for being money hungry. hungry. Yep. So we move to that stereotype as of Jews as economically exploitative, mm -hmm. Jews as money hungry, mm -hmm. Jews as lending for outrageous interests, mm -hmm. um, where in fact what's going on is they actually are um, forbidden from practicing many trades, they're forbidden from owning land, they're limited very much in how they can earn their living, but this is one of the ways they're, they're so, permitted to do it and yeah. it sort of sets them up to be scapegoated. So anti-Semitism over the centuries, it sort of has this theological base, mm -hmm. but then finds its way into different kinds of political structures, different mm -hmm. kinds of economic structures. Um, we move on to the French Revolution mm -hmm. and the rise of liberalism, which is this huge complex ideology and practice, but the part of it that's really important is that it basically states that um, rather than being confined by, a, being a separate type of human being, mm -hmm. confined to certain laws, forbidden from certain professions, in some cases confined to ghettos, to yeah. certain distinct areas to live, mm -hmm. that Jews can be equal, Jews will be equal citizens. Certainly. Citizenship is kind of available for Jews on an equal basis. And of course, liberalism makes that promise mm -hmm. to many other groups as well, and it's often delayed. Liberalism yep. is a process. Yep, it's absolutely. not an overnight kind of thing, right? I think I've heard that um, before. Right, <laughs> you know? So, and this is one of the really interesting things about anti-Semitism is that it intersects with so many different political formations mm -hmm. and economic formations, and it also then ends up intersecting with other kinds of bias, Certainly. right, with other isms. Mm -hmm. um, so in particular settings, you have you know, sort of convergences of um, of sort of color-based racism mm -hmm. and anti-Semitism. In yeah. other places, you have convergences of Islamophobia yep. and anti-Semitism, yeah. sort of the three monotheistic religions mm -hmm. with, with Christianity being the other. Mm -hmm. So that's the other element that then really comes into play is how anti-Semitism ends up intersecting with all these other forms of bias and privilege. Yeah. Um, as, you know, again, we roll through many centuries, Certainly. many different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it ends up taking a lot of different forms. Certainly. You both touched on something that I, I want, if you would, uh, kind of explore, and, and, and we'll start with you. Um, so you talked about it being on, in all countries uh, uh, of the world. Uh, but when most people see Jews today, they see European Jewry. Mm -hmm. uh, but we know it's in, as you mentioned, South America. It's on the continent of Africa. Um, it's in Asia. Uh, why is the only form of uh, uh, Judaism or Jews that we see seem to be our Eastern or Western European uh, uh, Judaism? Well, I think that touches on how Western society constructs hierarchy in general, mm -hmm. that we tend to pay more attention and center the stories of the dominant culture, which mm -hmm. in this time frame is 
white Western culture. Mm -hmm. And so I'm particularly vested in portraying Judaism in all its diversity. And mm -hmm. I really want people to know that there are Jews of all colors and that in fact, for most of Jewish history, Jews did not look like me. I would think the 12 right? tribes probably looked like the majority of the world, you, brown, you, you, absolutely. red, black, you know, and yellow. And the Torah talks about people of color and mm -hmm. um, Moses's beloved wife, who yeah. was a real hero in her own right, Ethiopia. was a woman of color, yeah, right? And Zipporah uh, and Yitro, mm -hmm. her father, was yeah. a very holy and wise leader, and he mm -hmm. was a, um, you know, a person of color. Yeah. So Judaism has always been ethnically diverse, mm -hmm. but it just so happens that in this iteration of where the center of Judaism is, it's mm -hmm. in the Western world numerically. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean there isn't a presence anywhere else. Certainly. It's just that the emphasis, partly because of like the Holocaust and Jews migrating mm -hmm. be both before and after the Holocaust, mm -hmm. migrating to the United States, which was a relative safe haven mm -hmm. for Jews, although there was a systemic anti-Semitism during the great waves of migration mm -hmm. in the United States and you know immigration of Jewish migrants was stemmed in 1924 mm -hmm. because of anti-Semitic sentiments um, but a lot of Jews found a home here mm -hmm. and the Jews who found a home here were European Jews who mm -hmm. phenotypically um, tends to be pale skins um, right again there's diversity within that population mm -hmm. right but I think like that is a, a good question, but I think what any kind of prejudice does to any kind of marginalized group mm -hmm. is that it flattens our perception. Certainly, it becomes it really very does. reductionist, yeah, right? Absolutely. Like, well, all black people are X, or mm -hmm. all gay people are Y, mm -hmm. or all Jewish people are Z. And I think it's really important for us to own our own stories, mm -hmm. to own our own narratives about who we are in all of our richness and complexity in the world. So. Absolutely, I think one of the ways to, to dismantling anti-Semitism is to look at the diversity Certainly. of the Jewish people Perfect. and to really celebrate that. And also to look at like how anti-Semitism intersects with these different forms of oppression, mm -hmm. right? That we are all strengthened by standing together in our so, common humanity yeah. and looking for our common values. Mm -hmm. And that anti-Semitism is hurtful, um, not just to Jews, but hurtful to any other people who experience mm -hmm. discrimination because it amplifies other forms of racism Same. and bigotry. Same. And I think that's really important that anti-Semitism, especially in its kind of white supremacy guys, mm -hmm. white supremacist guys, is the animating force um, that strengthens and amplifies other kinds of racism, which is not to say that um, anti-Semitism is so much worse than other forms of bigotry, mm -hmm. not at all. It's just to say to understand these other forms of racism, mm -hmm. it's helpful to understand anti-Semitism. And in order to understand anti-Semitism, it's really helpful to understand other kinds of racism. And as a rabbi, of course, you know, like I believe in my heart of hearts to every fiber of my being that all humanity is created as per Genesis 127 in the image of God, right? And there is no place for racism whatsoever in Jewish culture, in Jewish religion, in Jewish theology. That doesn't mean that Jews can't be as flawed as any mm -hmm. other people, Certainly. but for sure, and especially like our anchoring in the myth of um, the Exodus from Egypt that you referenced, that the core value of the Torah is radical empathy, mm -hmm. that we are not the descendants of kings, mm -hmm. but we are the descendants of slaves, mm -hmm. and that this calls us to have radical empathy for people who are strangers mm -hmm. in some way, for we way. were strangers in Egypt. Right, so um, I think I went a little bit roundabout. No, about, no, that, that's perfect. <laughs> I appreciate it. Did you want to uh, add anything to that? Oh, well, you know, it's really interesting because I think this question of, like you say, the sort of image of Jews as white, right, you know, is, I mean, I, I'm, my, my field of, of history that I teach at the university is, you know, 20th century Europe and Germany, so I teach a lot about national socialism and anti-Semitism, it's a huge part um, of the history I teach, and even there, which is, you know, we're not talking about going back centuries, mm -hmm. we're just talking about one century ago where in a place where their sort of catalog of, you know, people that we consider 
white, mm -hmm. they broke up into a lot of little groups right. with like really deadly results. Mm -hmm. Like this wasn't, it wasn't just on paper, this yeah. is like they meant it. They meant that kind of chopping up. So one thing that sort of evolves out of this is just kind of a recognition that of the ways that are talking about um, color come very much from our culture, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that the experience um, involves many, many cultures, but at the same time, one of the very important parts of that experience is um, that in, you know, in the modern era, era with Europe um, being, uh, and Europe and North America being so dominant geopolitically and with the um, advent of colonialism um, and Europe and North America extending their power elsewhere in the world, this business of the exertion of European power into other spaces, um, that expression of power is obviously very important. Um, and so, you know, migratory movements that Jews might experience as kind of fleeing persecution mm -hmm. um, are experienced elsewhere as, you know, a migration of, of colonialists, mm -hmm. of colonists, yeah. right? Um, so these kinds of questions of what is Europe's place mm -hmm. in this history mm -hmm. um, where Jews are often subject to anti-Semitism, but they are also part of European history. Right. And they're part of, in some way, they are part of, 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 of Europe's place in the globe more generally. Mm -hmm. It becomes a very complicated subject. So <laughs> we only have uh, oh, really no. <laughs> six or seven minutes left, but I, I, I want to touch on uh, the religious aspect because yeah. you uh, yeah. both have uh, uh, touched on it a little bit and uh, uh, the outgrowth of Christianity from uh, mm -hmm. the Jewish religion. But there, there is a, a, a feeling in Christianity that whether they're blaming uh, 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 the Jews or blaming Judaism for the death of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, uh, are you seeing or hearing um, that still be the case today? Was that back then in Europe, in Rome? Um, is it still yeah. a belief today? Well, it, it's a continuum, right? Mm -hmm. So like, just like with any other form of prejudice, you can have people who are really overtly racist mm -hmm. and people who are very subtly racist and everything in between, right? Um, so I don't hear that very often, mm -hmm. but I, I, I do think that what a lot of um, people who are engaging in interfaith discourse don't really have the language to articulate is that we need to break away from this image of Judaism, the parent, Christianity, the child, or Judaism, the prequel, Christianity, the sequel, <laughs> right? The original Star Wars versus the newer <laughs> Star Wars, That's right? Funny. I like that. Um, like you can obviously <laughs> see, see which version of Star Wars I like better, yes, right? Yes, but like, I, I think that's really historically incorrect imagery. Mm -hmm. Judaism, rabbinic Judaism, which is basically modern normative Judaism for the last 2,000 years, um, and Christianity share common roots mm -hmm. in biblical Israelite religion, mm -hmm. and were both responses to the context of his time, the Roman Empire, the Pax Romana, the yeah. oppression, and both the opportunities of the Pax Romana, right? So like, I much rather frame the relationship between Judaism and Christianity in terms of their siblings mm -hmm. or their cousins, mm -hmm. and they are on parallel tracks. And I think one of the things that helps me both love, understand, respect Christianity and love, understand and respect my own tradition is that we both have our own integrity, mm -hmm. right? I have a lot of Christians who will come to me and say, I really want to know about Judaism because of Jesus, because Jesus was a Jew. And he was, he was a really good yeah, Jew, he was, was a good, good Jew. Jewish boy, yeah. right? He really lived Jewish values. Yeah. But that's a great starting point for a conversation between our great faiths. Yeah. But it's not the ending point, right? Yeah. To which I would say, that's really lovely that you're here, that's a great entry point. But now I want to show you that Judaism has its own existence and its own integrity and its own reason for being, whether or not Christianity is in relationship with Judaism. We have our own theology, our own doctrine of salvation, which is actually pretty universal. Jews believe that every righteous person in the world can access heaven and can have a relationship with God, mm -hmm. irrespective of whether you convert to Judaism or practice your own faith, irrespective of what that faith is, right? And that is why we have a slightly different take on conversion. It has to be a voluntary act. We welcome converts for sure, but we never will pressure anyone into doing that because it has become 
from within themselves, right? So, like, I think the language of, like, we're both faiths journeying, you know, towards our version of redemption and being good stewards and citizens of this world and having an authentic relationship with God, but we do not have to cover yeah. each other, yeah, right? We have our own existence yeah. and both are valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, I think that, you know, it's, it's such a, a, a really interesting question, right, about where where is this theology today, right? And, you know, just as, as we've heard about the diversity of Jewish life, obviously Christian life is enormously mm -hmm. diverse and Christian theology yes, is enormously is. diverse, right? Um, you know, it, in Vatican II at the mid-1960s is when the Catholic Church officially renounced the notion that Jews were collectively responsible for the crucifixion and would be unto the generations, right? Mm -hmm. That was a formal, you know, this is a Vatican Council, and mm -hmm. you know, this is a really big deal when the Catholic Church made that move, and they mm -hmm. essentially tweaked the, you know, they, they, this was a really, you know, a, a, a deep sort of theological shift mm -hmm. um, with enormous social impact, so right? Much. And partly a recognition of the Catholic Church's um, involvement in atrocities against Jews mm -hmm. in prior um, generations. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, of course, you have so many other um, Christian denominations, which, which range enormously mm -hmm. in their um, theologies mm -hmm. of the relationship between Judaism and Christianity, um, as well as just kind of their their cultural, um, you know, their, their cultural relationships. Um, so I think that it's you know when I talk to my students about anti-Semitism, I always tell them. Anti-Semitism is not going to teach you much about Jews. Mm -hmm. It's going to teach you a lot about Christians, yes, it is. or in, in because that's else. the context yep, I'm talking to about 20th century Europe. Yep. Um, there, there certainly might be other contexts, but mm -hmm. basically, anti-Semitism teaches you a lot about anti-Semites, yeah. right? Where mm -hmm. are they coming from? Yep. What are they drawing on? How do they justify mm -hmm. this? What are they thinking? What is their worldview? Mm -hmm. um, you won't necessarily learn a whole lot about Judaism no. by looking at anti-Semites. So come, come to the synagogue. Yeah. You know, um, anyone is always welcome welcome to go to their local synagogue, mm -hmm. contact their local rabbi, um, explore, ask questions. There's like loads of wonderful information on the internet. Um, don't be a stranger, right? Mm -hmm. Just talk to us. We are friendly, mm -hmm. we are welcoming, um, and we're open to have these wonderful life-affirming conversations with mm -hmm. all communities in the world around us. Certainly. Yeah. Well, we are uh, out of time. That it was a uh, uh, unbelievable conversation and dialogue. Um, I wish uh, <laughs> we would have another <laughs> half an hour to an hour um, because there's still so much um, uh, to unpack. We didn't even really get to address some of the modern day. That's right. The, there is so much uh, to talk so about. There's so much to we'll talk about. We'll have to come back. We will yes. certainly come back. We'd yeah. love to have you guys yeah. back. And um, thank you, the viewer, uh, for joining us today. Um, you've heard some things here today, um, not just learning about Judaism, not rejecting anti-Semitism, but I think the larger message uh, for us to, to take and understand is that when you hurt any of us, it affects all of us. And we are all made in the image of God, and I hope that we would um, uh, take that message um, to uh, our communities, um, to our faith communities, to our larger communities, um, and walk in love and peace. Um, and with that, good day. <laughs>